Hi there, this is GT Tuning. We're just putting together a new uh, video for you guys showing the rotor pack rebuild service, all the problems that occur when the rotor's uh, bearings um, give a lot of end float. Um, a lot of you know we already do a PTO rebuild for these cars, which is mainly focused on the gears, which they're not on this one, but the two gears that go on here and the various parts that go in the PTO plate. There are other bits as well involved in that. That's all on a separate video. Um, we also do the nose rebuild. That's the snout. That's all the bearings and seals in that part. Uh, no video for that. Maybe in the future. But the one we're focusing on here is the rotor pack rebuild. Okay. Now this is a rotor pack. Okay. This has been taken out the main casing, so you can see what you've actually got there. And it's also got the nose removed off the front end. Um, now. What actually happens here is that there's two uh, fairly conventional ball racers that sit in here, one on either side. There's also some pretty special seals, uh, not the conventional seals that also sit in here as well, to keep all the oil in the nose area of the charger. These bearings here not only support the rotors to prevent any radial movement, they're also the only item that's preventing any end float. End float is where the rotors move end to end, like that. Now if you get excessive end float on there, it's going to make the charger noisy. The rotors are going to hit this face here. They'll also hit the other face on the other inside the casing itself. Um, and they'll also cause rotor to rotor contact, because as the rotors are moving um, up and down, then the rotors will become to get to the point where they're actually touching each other. To give you an idea of the sort of tolerances we're talking here, in a normal running condition, these lobes and these troughs here miss each other by 0.2 of a millimetre. That's eight thou if you're thinking in English, and that's as close as they get. In fact, when they get hot, they probably get even closer to that. So the degree of accuracy needed to retime these rotors so that they're running with the correct clearance without any risk of touching each other is very, very high. Um, what keeps these rotors apart is these two gears here. Um, now, if you were to just press these gears off, we hear people that do it, if you do that, you've basically completely wrecked your supercharger. Okay, the chance of you being able to retime that back up so that the loads don't touch each other in normal operation is almost zero. So, basically, don't push these gears off. Now, we've actually made some special tooling, which we're not going to show you here because we don't want anyone copying it, um, allows us to very, very accurately retime the gears. So once we've pressed all the gears on, off, we can then push all the bearings and seals in, the replacement ones, and then we can push the gears back on and be assured that the rotors will be exactly timed as they originally were. So within this end of the uh, rotor pack here, we've got these two bearings here, we've got these two seals here, and there's also on the other end, We'll just momentarily uh, talk about those. There's some needle rollers on the other end. Now, if these wear particularly badly for whatever reason, they will damage the shaft. Now, this is a good example of a shaft that's very worn. It's worn where the seal sits on it. That's the one behind the, uh, the PTO gear, the one that goes to the water pump. And then the bearing itself runs on this diameter here. Now, if you get to that stage, the supercharger is completely scrapped so we can't do anything with that. Um, fortunately we don't see very many of those, I think two we've only ever seen. But the rotor pack rebuild itself, normally when we get the end float, let's go on to that now. Well, we've got two chargers here, this is one which needs a rotor pack rebuild of the service that we're now about to offer but hasn't had it. So if we just push these rotors here, you can hear that. Now this one, you can check both rotors, not the one, because sometimes one will be worse than the other. These are both pretty equally bad. Now we've measured that end float with some feeder gauge, and that's about 0.7 of a millimetre, which if you're thinking in English, that's 28 thou, um, which is way more than it wants to be. Ideally we want to be, I would probably say under 0.2 of a mil, which is about 8 thou. Um, so that's definitely need a rotor, one of our rotor pack rebuilds. This one here, is one that we have just done. Again, it's got the nose off and the PTO off. One of the reasons is we can then push and pull on the ends of the rotor shaft. So we're going to do the same test on this one. We're pushing on this end here. It's got our green coupler on there. Looks pretty. So we can push and pull on that one, and we can push and pull on this one here. And no noise. And if you put your camera in there, 
There's absolutely zero play on that at all. We'll do the same on the second rotor. I had to put our fingers right up inside the inlet to get a push on that. Nothing at all. So there's absolutely no end flow. That's not to say there's no gap. Um, the actual clearance between the rotor and the casing, we've measured that. It's somewhere between 0.05 and 0.1 millimetres, which if you're thinking in English, that's between 2 and 4 thou, which is about the clearance you want there. So that turning that's nice and smooth. No rotor to rotor contact, no rotor to casing contact. And none of that noise when you push and pull on the rotors. So that one's all ready to be um, rebuilt. We're doing a nose on this one as well. This one, the PTO, was very good on this one. So I say this is one of the reasons we're now offering this service because not all chargers are the same. Um, most second-hand chargers, or good second-hand chargers, are very hard to get hold of or becoming expensive. So the need for us to be able to offer a rebuild service on the rotors is perhaps greater than it would have been maybe three or four years ago. Um, so yeah, that's that's that one here. Now, um, not more to say really. Um, as I say, the most important thing is don't push these gears off yourself. If you do that, we can't do anything with it, and I'm sure no one else can as well. Um, the seals are oh, these are all damaged up ones we've pushed out. Um, the seals are quite a um, special seal. They're not standard size or standard type, so you can't get those. These bearings are fairly conventional to be fair, and these are a special uh, bearing here as well. Now if we do a rotor pack rebuild, um, we will include supply and fit of our coupler on the front end automatically, and obviously we do both oil changes. It's a good time to do this supercharger probably change at the same time if you haven't already done that. But a lot of people won't know what's wrong with their charger, which is fully understandable. So what we say to you is send the complete charger down they're not done on exchange, but it's always repairing your own charger. You wouldn't want to end up with someone else's charger that was worse than your one. Um, so always do your own charger, and we will do a, a free initial evaluation of, of what the problems are within the charger. So we'll do an initial part strip on it, inspect the nose, um, we'll inspect the rotor pack for the end floats, we'll do our, obviously our checks that we normally do on the PTON, which is our main uh, rebuild service that we offer that's certainly the most popular one and from there we will advise you what you need so if, if the car come if the charger comes in and the pto is absolutely perfect as it was on this one you don't need to have that done uh, if the rotor packs damaged then you need to do that if the nose is okay we don't need to do that so probably wouldn't go for all three because then you then you'll be getting to the point where you wouldn't be far the price of a brand new charger which are 1400 pounds they were last time we checked they may even be more now so yeah, the need to be able to repair these properly is, is greater than it was. Um, and I don't know what the prices may go up even more than that on the, on the, on the new items. But um, yeah, I think that's all we need to cover here for now. Um, by all means, um, phone, give us a message if you're not sure. But uh, generally speaking, take the charger off, put a little note in it with your name, address, all important phone number in there. Make sure you pack it well, send it down. Um, and we'll phone you back with our findings. But we offer quite quick turnaround these. Most of the time we try to do the repairs within two working days of us having the charger. We've got the transit time on top of that. Um, but depending on what we're doing. Certainly the PTO ones we can do in 48 hours and similarly with the snout. Rotor pack is a little bit more tricky. Um, perhaps three or four days. Um, but that may become less. But thanks for listening and uh, have a good day. Thank you.